Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Emily from GoWP. So welcome to today's webinar about how to start your own podcast with the podcaster extraordinaire, Joe Casabona. Um, really quick, I want to say a couple words about GoWP for those of you who are not familiar with us. At GoWP, we are a team that loves to help agencies. Um, we love to help them succeed and grow by providing exceptional white label WordPress services. Um, our team works under your brand to take care of your clients so you can focus on the important stuff. So this means that GoWP takes that low touch, high value work, or sorry, <laughs> we take the high touch, low value work off your plate so you can focus on the low touch, high value work. Um, so we do things like maintenance, updates, uh, security scans, secure backups, malware cleanup, all that kind of stuff that takes up your time. Um, and we also can take care of the unlimited content edit requests that come in from your clients uh, every day. So if you have any questions about partnering with GoWP and how we can help your agency, you can reach out to me in the Facebook group. You can reach out to me here on the chat. You can email me at emily at gowp.com. Um, speaking of the Facebook group, those of you here in the Zoom call, if you are not aware, we have a GoWP niche agency owners community. Um, it's a group of agency professionals who either already serve a niche market or would like to niche down. Uh, this webinar right now is being broadcast live streamed over there. Um, and you can catch the recording there as well. All of them, all of our webinars are uh, stored there. So you can go check it out and request to join. We'd love to have you. So that is the Niche Agency Owners Facebook group. Um, a few notes regarding the webinar. I will be watching the chat both here in Zoom and in the Facebook group. So if you have any questions, comments, throw them up in there. I'll be there and so will uh, my teammate Kaylin. She'll be over in the Facebook group. So let us know your questions. I'll be sure to get them to Joe and we'll, we'll take care of them. So just a quick test of the chat. We already got some people uh, talking earlier, but uh, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves on Facebook or in Zoom, either way. Um, let us know if you have a podcast already, if you uh, are wanting to create a podcast and that's why you're here. Um, so yeah, let's hear it. Um, so let's see, we've got Kate from Snowy. Am I, is that Michigan or Minnesota? Is that, what is Michigan. that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Michigan. MN is Minnesota. All right. Oh, we got someone from Ohio. Sonia, hello. Uh, Atlanta, that's great. Hello. Michelle, hi. So hello, everybody. The chat is working. Um, we got Beth and the other Michelle over here on Facebook. So that's great. Um, okay, so let's get to why we're here today. Starting your own podcast from scratch. Joe Casabona. Um, is a college professor, author, course developer, and podcaster. His passion in both areas uh, drove him to create courses for the University of Scranton, LinkedIn Learning, and his own community of business owners. Today, he helps people tell their stories through podcast and video. Um, you may know him from his How I Built It podcast, and he just recently launched a new service called Ship Your Podcast. So, hello, Joe. Hi, Emily. Thanks for that fantastic introduction. And thanks to everybody for being here. Uh, I have some slides prepared. So I will go ahead and share my screen now. All right. And let's see, I can now I can no longer see the chat, uh, the chat, but Emily can. So if I can get a thumbs up on if people can see the slides. Yep, looks good. Fantastic. So I'm going to be talking to you about how to start a podcast today. I'm going to be talking about a lot of resources and things. So you can go to shipyourpodcast.com slash resources to get all of those, uh, including these slides, which will be there as well. So let's start off with uh, answering a very important question so that we're all on the same page. And that's what is podcasting? Well, if we look at Webster's Dictionary, which is always the best way to start a talk, uh, the definition of podcast is the practice of using the internet to make digital recordings of broadcasts available, blah, blah, blah. That's really, really wordy. Uh, I don't really like this definition. So I went to my good friend Google, who's good at distilling things into helpful one sentence answers. And for podcasting, 
it is, for many people, podcasting is the logical next step from blogging. And indeed, podcasting today is a lot like blogging was in, let's say, the early to mid-2000s. And Google and I aren't the only ones who think so. As a matter of fact, Seth Godin blogged some time ago uh, that podcasting is the new blogging. And he says this for a bunch of reasons, but I want to draw your attention to the last paragraph here, which says, podcasting is the generous act of showing up, earning trust and authority because you care enough to raise your hand and speak up. And something that I want to uh, reinforce now is that you don't need to start a unique podcast, just like you don't need to start a unique blog. You just need to start a podcast that has your own voice. And that's going to be kind of the theme of what we're talking about, especially early on here. So podcasting is the new blogging, or as I like to say, podcasting is a way to get your message or your client's message to thousands of people. So as we go through this talk, think about the podcast you want to start, or if you're an agency owner and you want to help your clients reach a new audience, what is a good podcast for your clients to start? So first, why should you podcast? This is something that takes time and money and energy, and it can feel like a grind sometimes. So why should you even start a podcast? Well, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, one, to build your audience and establish your authority. My audience has grown significantly since I started my podcast. Uh, you can also gain a loyal following. Podcast listeners are some of the most loyal folks you'll find because they feel like they know you as the host. They are inviting you into their headphones on a weekly basis. And as a result, they feel like they've connected with you. Uh, I like to say that podcast is, I always struggle with, with the, the right word, but it intimate. Podcast feels like an intimate act because it's you and the person in the headphones and you're laughing at their jokes and you're learning more about the host. And that makes podcast listeners very loyal. Uh, it also is a great place to get your ideas out there and you can help people. That's, uh, I think that's why a lot of us like to put out content, especially for free. Uh, and one thing that I didn't list here is that it's a great way to repurpose content. So if you have a blog post that you think is, is really good, then maybe make that a podcast episode and now you have the opportunity to reach other people. Uh, on top of that, podcasting is an act that uh, people can do while they're doing other things, right? So uh, they don't need to be sitting in front of a computer or in front of their phone and reading. They could be driving sometime in the future when we can drive places again. Uh, they could be working out or doing chores. I listen to podcasts while I mow the lawn and uh, while I poorly do the dishes. Uh, so podcasting is something that people can do anywhere, which is great. And that kind of gives it a leg up on blogging. So hopefully now uh, with that brief slide, I've convinced you that you need to start a podcast that you were probably already convinced if you're here. So maybe you're wondering what your podcast topic should be about. And this is really important. You want to start with why. Why do you want to start a podcast? Start with Why is one of my favorite books. I read it a few years ago, and it has been a guiding force in the decisions I make. It's something that I work into a lot of my own talks. And so Start with Why by Simon Sinek. If you haven't read it, uh, I strongly recommend it because it tells you that you should start before anything else with why you're doing something, because that's your mission statement, essentially. So why do you want to start a podcast? You want to build an audience, increase revenue streams, repurpose old content, help people, all of the above. The other way I like to put it is, what is what's the thing that you need your audience to hear, or the thing you need your audience to learn? Putting that out there will be the guiding force for your podcast. So for my podcast, how I built it, I wanted to help small business owners grow because I am a small business owner and I want to grow. So the guests that I have on my podcast are mostly people who are relatable to small business owners, probably in the tech field, 
And I ask them questions that I want to know the answers to. The whole reason I started my podcast is because I was having these private conversations and I thought, hey, other people could probably benefit, benefit from this. So that's why I started my podcast. You should figure out why you want to start your own. It should also be a topic that you're passionate about. Uh, because podcasting is a grind and you need to love talking about the thing in order to keep doing it. Uh, in my podcasting course, when I guide students, I tell them to make a list of the things that they are very passionate about. Uh, so for me, it might be WordPress and podcasting, which is meta, I guess, uh, and teaching and Disney and cigars and Star Wars. Of all those topics, what is the thing I want to be known for, right? As much as I love Disney and Star Wars, uh, that's probably not something, I, I don't want those hobbies to start to feel like a job. So that's how I start to narrow down my topic and figure out my list. And again, I would encourage you to do the same thing. Make a list of the things that you are passionate about and then figure out what is something that I feel like I could do this uh, for a few hours a week at least on. Uh, and it's okay if somebody else is talking about it. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I launched How I Built It, about three or four months later, a very large broadcasting uh, company called NPR launched a podcast called How I Built This, which was virtually the same thing. I mean, you know, the host of that show is getting like Michael Dell and the founder of like REI. Um, and I'm not talking to those people, but those aren't the people I want to talk to either. So this is all to say that it's okay if somebody else is talking about that. Uh, podcasting is not a zero sum game. People are looking to learn something. As a matter of fact, like something like 75% of people who listen to podcasts want to learn something new from their podcasts. So if somebody is talking about it, that's fine. Just make sure to use your own voice and make sure the content is good and you'll put out a good show. Once you have your topic, you're going to want to pick your name and pick a name that communicates the show's message. I know a lot of people are inclined to name the podcast after themselves or call it something generic, but uh, the name should communicate what the show is about. So if I called my podcast the Joe Casabona Show, people who didn't know Joe Casabona, which is more people than not, uh, they're not really going to, they're going to be like, who's Joe Casabona? I don't care, right? Unlike Joe Rogan, like Joe Rogan can call his show the Joe Rogan Show because everybody knows who he is. Um, so I went with how I built it. I thought it conveniently and succinctly talked about the topic of the show. Oh, people are going to learn how things were built. Uh, do a search on iTunes and make sure it's unique enough. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely unique. Uh, there should probably be more difference than how I built it and how I built this, but again, I was there first. Um, if you look closely, you could see the little tiny chip on my shoulder about that, but um, make sure that it's unique and it's going to stand out and then make sure to grab the domain. Uh, so I think that's important. Do an, well, do an iTunes or Apple podcast search to make sure that you're not finding a podcast that's exactly the same name. Uh, another quick tip about this, when you set up your podcast, which we'll talk about later, Make sure to uh, make your name the host name. Uh, so this was for a long time. My podcast was How I Built It by How I Built It. Uh, and I changed that to Joe Casabona. So now if people do search for Joe Casabona in the iTunes or the Apple Podcasts directory, uh, my podcasts will show up. So just an, another quick tip there. So you have your topic you have your name. Now let's talk about formats. Interview formats are the most common, uh, the most, um, the ones that people tend to put out the most, but there are a few different ones that you can try. So there are, I've distilled it, actually my friend Matt Medeiros and I distilled it down to five topics. Uh, there's the solo show, that's one person talking into a microphone. There's the news headline show, there's host, co-host, interview, and then there's the heavily produced shows. So running through these, uh, just to give you kind of a one sentence description, a solo show is generally a scripted show where the host is talking into the microphone about a specific topic. 
A good example of this is Pat Flynn's Smart Passive Income or Amy, Part, uh, Amy Porterfield's Online Marketing Made Easy. For the most part, their shows are solo shows where they pick a topic where they are an expert and then they talk about it, giving you advice along the way. News headline shows, these are really nice quick format shows because you can essentially uh, gather news headlines from the day or the week and then put them out there, explain them and talk about them. I had a short form podcast like that for my Patreon when I had a, a Patreon uh, and it was, it was doing pretty well. I would essentially take the stories I shared in my newsletter and then elaborate on them a little bit more in the podcast. Um, there's one, there's one called, I'm going to forget the name cause I didn't write it down. I think it's called tech my ride, uh, something like that. Um, it's by tech meme and they do this daily at 5 PM Eastern. They talk about the top three tech news stories and it's a great format because people can quickly get their news on their, again, their commute or when they have some downtime. Uh, the host co-host format is going to be you and a friend or you and somebody else talking about some topic. And so you kind of share the load of the solo show where the solo show is always on you host co-host. You get to kind of share that um, stuff you should know is a great example uh, of a host co-host show that or stuff you missed in history class. Those are two of my favorites. It's the, the two hosts have great chemistry, they pick a good topic, and they go back and forth on, on uh, different talking points. There's the interview show that, again, is the most common. You have a host or a host co-host, and each week they interview somebody different. That is my podcast for the most part. I'm, I've kind of pivoted it a little bit to interview, and then every fourth or fifth episode is just me talking about a topic. But for the most part, uh, it's you talking to a guest. This is great because you don't just feel like you're talking to yourself. You, you have somebody to talk to and you're asking questions and you're probably learning a lot. But these tend to be a lot of work, uh, even more so than the previous three, because uh, if you are, yes, you're going to research for each of these topics, but if you already know a lot about like the, the best WordPress security plugins or something like that, you're just going to make sure you have your facts right and then you can talk about them. With an interview show, you need to find guests, do a little bit of research on them to make sure they'll bring value to your show, book the guest, record the guest, make sure their recording goes well, edit everything together, and then put it out there. So interview shows could be a lot of work. And if you're unsure, then you might want to try the solo show at first just to be comfortable in what you're doing. Uh, because the interviewer also can make or break the show. Uh, I happen to talk a lot and I've been told I'm a good interviewer. And, and so that's, I think that's really helped. Um, and then finally, there's the heavily produced show. This is the show like uh, Serial or Criminal. Um, you have these multi-cast uh, audio dramas that are deeply researched with like background music and high production value. And uh, one of my small dreams is to do one of these one day but um this is a lot of work a lot of budget this is why you see people like npr and gimlet and wondry uh putting out shows like this uh though lore was a very popular heavily produced show it was deeply researched by aaron menke and the music was put together and and he he kind of helped popularize this form of podcasts and podcasts in general. I think uh, Laura and Serial really did a lot to bring podcasting into the mainstream. Okay, so we have all the particulars determined for our podcast. Now we're going to talk about one of my favorite things, which is the right gear. I love talking about hardware and audio gear, and I love trying out a lot of stuff. Uh, if you're wondering, I get this question a lot, what am I using? Uh, I will, I'll link that on the resources page, but this microphone is the Shure SM7B. Uh, this is a podcast microphone that you will see in pop culture a lot. Uh, there's that, or there's another one that's called like the Electon, something like that. Um, and you'll see both of these in uh, podcast or radio settings. 
that's on my Rode boom arm right here. I'm talking to you from the Sony a6400 camera. That is not part of my podcast, but a lot of people ask about it. Um, that said, I've been doing this for, I've been podcasting for like six or seven years now. So I've tried a lot of gear. What you need starting out, and you can do this for less than a hundred bucks, a decent microphone, uh, a pop filter, a pop filter will uh, prevent those hard P sounds, like those gusts of air from going into your microphone. That's what this like windscreen is here. Uh, so a pop filter will help with that. It is very obvious when somebody doesn't have one because it's a very jarring sound, especially if you have headphones on. Uh, and those are generally pretty affordable and just go right on the front of the microphone. Uh, the Shure SM7B has one built in, which is why it's very popular among podcasters. Uh, the boom arm is optional, but it's nice because you can move your microphone out of your way or if you're trying to type and talk at the same time, your microphone's not in the way. Uh, and headphones, you're going to want headphones because you don't want the sound coming out of your speakers because that's going to interfere with your audio and you might get a little bit of an echo. So uh, to, uh, especially too, if you have guests or co-hosts where you're doing it over Zoom, make sure everybody's wearing headphones because my audio has come through on my guest speakers and I've had to edit it a little bit more in order to make it sound good. Uh, the last thing I would mention that is not listed here is a shock mount. Uh, a shock mount is essentially a little cradle that your microphone goes in so that if you bang your desk, it doesn't come through on the microphone. So I'm banging my desk. You probably, you maybe hear the stuff moving on my desk, but as I tap this, you probably don't hear a lot of shaking coming through, a lot of bangs coming through. That's because the Shure SM7B also has a shock mount built in. So this is the stuff that I think you should get for your podcast. A decent mic can cost you between 60 and 70 bucks. A pop filter will cost like six. A boom arm you can get for $13. And headphones, you can use the ones that you already have. The microphone uh, that I would recommend is going to be a USB microphone. You'll probably hear USB versus XLR a lot. Uh, XLR is that little connector that you've probably seen. It's like a three prong connector. And I don't recommend that for beginners at first because then you have another piece of equipment you need to buy, which is a interface. And then you need to configure that interface. And most times that's going to be a little bit overboard for starting a podcast. It can be overwhelming. We want you to get started as soon as possible. So I'm going to recommend a USB mic. That USB mic that I recommend is the ATR2100. You can usually find it for 65 or 70 bucks on Amazon. Uh, if you look today, it might not be available because there's been like a crazy run on microphones and webcams because everybody's working from home now. Um, but this is the microphone I recommend. There will be a podcast starter kit gear link on the resources page. But again, this mic gets the job done. And just to show you or to kind of reinforce that, uh, Matt Medeiros, if you probably know him from the Matt Report, it's a very popular uh, WordPress focused and business focused podcast. He was using a high end, or higher end microphone called the Heil PR40. And he recently switched to the ATR2100 because that was more mobile and good enough. He still sounds uh, very good. So uh, Matt, I would consider a professional podcaster and he's using the ATR2100 because it, ha it does have some benefits. Okay, with your microphone, now we need to figure out how you're going to record and save your podcast. So uh, first, let's talk about how we can record the highest quality audio possible. Uh, depending on your environment. A good forgiving microphone helps. The reason I recommend the ATR2100 over something like the Blue Yeti, which is also often recommended, is because the ATR2100 is a little bit more forgiving than the Blue Yeti out of the box. You can tweak the Blue Yeti. There are knobs on the back where you can make some adjustments, but out of the box, plugging it into your computer, the ATR2100 is a little bit more forgiving. With your environment, you're going to want to deflect and dampen sound as much as possible. I have a video that talks in depth about this, but these panels that you see right here, this is acoustic foam. Uh, this is going to 
absorb some of the sound and deflect the rest of it. That's why it's got a pattern here. I have some more on the wall right in front of me and some to the side. Uh, these things are going to make sure that sound doesn't bounce off my walls and back into my microphone because that's going to create that echoey sound that you hear in a lot of people's recordings. Uh, if you don't have acoustic foam, uh, it could be very affordable, but like if you have a bookcase or a corner that you can kind of put some stuff in, that's going to work just as well. Uh, I've also heard and have done um, something where I take a blanket, like a comforter, and I put it over my head and my microphone. The, uh, the comforter is going to kill sound coming into your microphone, and it's going to absorb sound as it goes out. So there's nothing for the sound to bounce off of. That is not ideal uh, long term if you're going to have a setup like this, but in a pinch it works. Uh, professionals like Mike uh, Rowe have done that where they've gone into a closet and they've had a blanket around them to record. And that's because it's giving the sound less opportunity to bounce around. Uh, so that is the big thing that you want to do. You want to treat your room. Um, if you have like hardwood floors, uh, just an area rug will help too, because again, that sound is going to bounce off the floor and back up into your microphone. You want to absorb, uh, you want to absorb and deflect as much sound as possible. Wearing headphones will help. A pop filter and a boom arm will help. So uh, those are things that are super helpful. And if you're recording with another person online, uh, you can also do things like make sure you're each recording your side of the audio, uh, turn off things like Dropbox or Google Drive, anything that is bandwidth heavy, uh, because if you're recording in Zoom or something like that, you want to prevent that robot voice. Um, but recording each side of the audio separately is going to give you the uncompressed version of the audio, which is going to sound the best. Uh, and I talk about all of that and more over at casabuna.org recording. Again, all of the resources will be on the resource page. The way you can capture audio, uh, there are four programs here that I mentioned. They are all free depending on the platform. So for Mac, QuickTime is a great application for just recording audio. You can choose your microphone and then just record some high quality audio into QuickTime. That's free. It comes with your Mac. At the bottom of the list, Windows Recorder is what comes with Windows. Same thing. You have your microphone set up, and um, you just press record, and it'll save that file. The two programs that will record and also allow you to edit, if you're on a Mac, GarageBand, that's actually what I use to record and edit my podcast. Well, I'm using Logic Pro more lately, uh, but for just like general record and like chop where I mess up, um, GarageBand is great and it's free. And Audacity is the number one free cross-platform tool. Uh, you talk to a lot of podcasters and they will swear by Audacity. So if you're looking to record and also do some editing yourself, Audacity is the way to go. Uh, there's lots of tutorials, lots of resources on that. And then speaking of, uh, we want to talk about editing. So there are two ways uh, that you can edit. You can edit it yourself. Looking at some of the tools I just mentioned, Audacity and GarageBand, those are free. Audacity is cross-platform. Uh, if you're on a Mac and you want something a little beefier, uh, Logic Pro is going to be the way to go, I think, right now as we record this. Apple is offering an extended 90-day trial of Logic Pro uh, for people who are stuck at home and maybe want to learn a new skill. So definitely take advantage of that. Uh, Adobe Audition is cross-platform. It's part of the Creative Cloud suite. That's another thing that people will use to edit. But Audacity and GarageBand are both free, and they'll get the job done for minor edits. If you're doing like serious audio cleanup, Logic Pro and Adobe, Adobe Audition are the way to go. As for me, ooh, it's missing a slide there. As for me, I learned pretty early on that uh, editing is something that takes up way too much of my time and is not something I super enjoy uh, or neither nor am I good at it. So you can also hire an editor. Uh, I have an editor who does a lot of simple stuff for my podcast 
uh, I send it all automatically to him via Dropbox. And uh, I found him on Fiverr. So he will edit the podcast. Generally, my episodes are less than an hour. He'll put the bumpers on. He'll add the sponsor spots. Uh, the bumpers are the beginning and ending uh, audio. I record the interview and then I record the bumpers later so that I can kind of summarize the episode. Um, but he'll put it all together for me. He'll do some slight cleanup and it costs like 25 to 30 bucks an episode. Uh, that is well worth what would take me like an hour or two. Uh, so you can also hire an editor. Higher end editors are going to be more expensive than that, but they'll do a lot of cleanup. So if you have the budget and you want just pristine sounding audio, you can go for that. I'm very happy with my editor because I take a lot of precautions in the beginning to make sure I'm getting super clean audio from both me and my guest. Okay, so that is everything. My last piece of advice before we talk about setting up the podcast is record three or four episodes before you announce your podcast or do any of the legwork to start promoting it or putting up a website to see if you like it, to get your sea legs, um, do like a rehearsal if you if you want to do an interview have a friend uh, do a mock interview with you to record just to kind of get into the flow of recording uh, I was asked uh, at a WordCamp talk I gave in New York City uh, how do you get more comfortable in front of the microphone and my answer was get your reps in just the more you do it the more comfortable you'll feel because it can feel kind of weird talking to nobody or talking into a camera. So get your reps in uh, and, and rehearse and practice a little bit and you'll feel more comfortable. So record a couple of episodes before you really start to publicize to see if you like it. And assuming you do like it, a podcast needs a home. I know a lot of people will just set up their feed somewhere and then share like the iTunes link. And the problem with that is you're alienating about 40 to 45% of podcast listeners if you're just sharing the Apple podcast link because that other 40 to 45% is on Android or uses Spotify and they don't have access to Apple podcasts so they can't subscribe through uh, that link. Your podcast should have a website. Your website allows for a central place for content like RSS, which stands for really simple syndication, and you need an RSS feed to send your podcast to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and other stuff. Uh, and then your website will also allow for the canonical link for each episode. Each episode is going to have the one true source for your podcast episodes, and it's gonna have the audio, some show notes maybe, a transcript maybe, and it'll be the place where you can funnel people and then they could subscribe in their favorite podcast listener of choice. Setting up a good, pod, a, a good website for your podcast will help your podcast grow. I can tell you that because it has, it's worked for me. Um, I've put a lot of time and effort into the websites I set up for my podcast. I wanna make sure that it's clear that they can subscribe somewhere, I want to make sure it's clear that they can listen right on the website. And I want to make sure it's clear that all of the links and the transcript and email opt-ins and things like that will be available there. It's an easy to remember URL that I can speak easily and it will attract more visitors. So that's the pitch. You, I think your podcast needs a website and each episode should have its own page. Luckily, I'm going to show you or I'm going to tell you what you need for that. So the four things your, your podcast website absolutely need, a good domain, good hosting, WordPress, and a podcast plugin. Most of you are in the WordPress crowd here, so I'm going to skip over the pitch for WordPress uh, and hosting. I'm sure you all probably have your own hosting, your own favorite hosting at this point. Um, the good domain we talked about, pick a name. Pick an easy to speak domain too. That's really important. Um, try not to have numbers in it because when you're speaking the domain, if you say like, find my podcast at onetruesource.com, is it the number one? Is it the 
the word one spelled out. Now you either have to buy both or specify. So try to make it an easily speakable domain. No hyphens either. That's, that's again, that's something that uh, find my podcast at one dash hyphen, uh, one hyphen true hyphen source.com. That's problematic. Um, I couldn't even speak it now in this fake hypothetical. Um, so good domain, good hosting, WordPress. You also need separate audio hosting. I know that you can upload audio to WordPress, to WordPress's media uh, library, but specialized hosting means faster downloads. It means that if your site goes down, your podcast won't because it is somewhere else that is more reliable. You'll also have advanced analytics, so you'll be able to get download numbers, where your listeners are coming from, what episodes are the most popular, Stats aren't just for if you want to have sponsors. Stats are to let you know uh, this episode killed it. My episode that's out right now with Maddie Osman is killing it. I need to have Maddie on more often, or I need to talk about more of those topics, as opposed to some episodes that weren't so great. Um, and then you can also have custom or more customizable audio players if you use a separate audio host. So you should absolutely use an audio host. Uh, there are a handful of good audio hosts out there. Libsyn and Blueberry are both ones that I've used. I still use Libsyn for my own podcast. Uh, Castos is the one that I always recommend if people are using a WordPress site because it's got killer WordPress integration. If you set it up with their plugin, which we'll talk about later, you never need to visit Castos, uh, the, the interface. You could just upload it directly through WordPress and Castos will do the work for you. Or if you don't want to set up a WordPress site and you just want it all done for you, uh, Simplecast is a really good all-in-one solution that gives you nice looking websites uh, where you can upload show notes and transcripts. So they do a really good job on that front. My recommendation is Castos uh, because of the things I just talked about. If you're using a WordPress site, Castos has the best WordPress integration. They also have a couple of tiered plans where at their highest plan, which is not much more expensive than their lowest plan, uh, they'll also send your podcast to YouTube for you automatically. So that's really nice as well. Along with your, uh, your audio host and WordPress, you need a podcast plugin. You need a podcast plugin because the plugin is going to generate a Apple Podcast uh, compliant RSS feed. Apple Podcasts requires certain information to be in your podcast RSS feed. So you can't just use like the default WordPress RSS feed. So uh, what you want to do is make sure, uh, is consider if your podcast host has a WordPress plugin. Most do. Uh, Libsyn does, Blueberry does. Blueberry has PowerPress, which is the one that I use most often. Lipson's needs work, to put it nicely. Um, Castos has one called Seriously Simple Podcasting, uh, which is great. Uh, and those that I just mentioned, PowerPress and Seriously Simple Podcasting, uh, have Apple compliant RSS feeds. So they do the heavy lifting for you. You also want to look at the features. How customizable is it? Does it have all of the, the tick marks for uh, Apple Podcasts where you can, like, say the episode? number and the season number and what type of episode it is, whether it's a trailer or an actual episode, uh, a full episode or a bonus episode. And does it play nice with other themes and plugins? So uh, look at the feature list for the, the ones I, I just mentioned, PowerPress and Seriously Simple Podcasting. I like and recommend Seriously Simple Podcasting. It has everything I just talked about. It integrates perfectly with uh, Castos. So if you're going to use Castos, that's a great fit. If you are going to use something like Blueberry or Libsyn, PowerPress is, is, is a good option as well. But I think Series Simple Podcasting is a little bit more user-friendly. Uh, other helpful plugins for your podcast, Smart Podcast Player. Uh, this is by Pat Flynn. Uh, it, has, it takes your audio and puts it into a really nice looking player. And you can even have like a call to action in that player, which is super cool. Uh, simple sponsorships. If you're going to have sponsorships, uh, this is a great plugin that uh, creates a custom post type, but it also lets you send out invoices through there. So 
a sponsorship won't go live until the invoice is paid, which is really neat. Uh, Search WP, I use Search WP on mine because I have a lot. I have almost, well, like 160 something episodes right now, uh, but I have transcripts for all of those. And I want the transcripts to be searchable and associated with the episode. Search WP lets me do that. And then Thirsty Affiliates. We're not going to talk about monetizing the podcast here, but a good way to monetize your podcast if you don't have, if you don't necessarily have sponsors, uh, which is most podcasts, is affiliate links. And Thirsty Affiliates is a really good plugin for managing affiliate links, especially if you're going to have transcripts. Uh, you can use Thirsty Affiliates to auto link certain terms so that you don't need to comb through a transcript and find the ones that you want to link. And then you, got, you want to find a good theme. Uh, these themes are recommended by me because I've used them and I've had a good experience with them. Uh, Astra or Astra Pro, Monochrome Pro and Minimum Pro, those are both by Studio Press. I think those are just generally nice looking themes. But these are the ones that I've used for my podcast and they've played nicely with the plugins I've recommended and they list my episodes in a really nice way. Uh, so uh, they also don't have any dependencies on page builders. I was using one over the weekend uh, that I just had a really bad experience with because it relied on uh, a page builder that I'm not familiar with. And I, don't, I didn't feel like that was within the purview of the theme. So Astra, Monochrome Pro, Minimum Pro, uh, those work with page builders, but do not require them. Okay, you've done everything up until this point. You have episodes recorded, you, uh, are, you have your host and your website is set up. Now you need to submit your podcast to podcast directories. This far and away is how most people will discover you. You want to submit your show to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts. Uh, quick note on Google Podcasts is you don't actually need to submit it anywhere because Google is the all-knowing, all-seeing eye. It just knows when you put a podcast out into the world and indexes you. Uh, I'm guessing it looks for like those Apple podcast specific feed things uh, and then indexes you as a podcast. But you want to submit to these five and these five basically make it to every other podcast app or directory. Uh, and if you're looking for like the lowest hanging fruit for submission, Apple podcasts and Spotify are the two absolute musts. Uh, Tune in and Stitcher are, are nice to have. A note on Apple podcast is you have to have an iTunes account, which is frustrating, but uh, you need to. So if you have a Windows machine, uh, you might need to download iTunes for Windows. I don't know if that exists anymore, uh, but um, I'll, I'll link to some resources that kind of walk you through how to submit to each of these. Spotify makes it super easy, which I deeply appreciate. Not as easy as Google, because Google just knows you have a podcast, uh, but as easy as it can be without just knowing you have a podcast. Uh, these are the five that I recommend. And tips for submitting your podcast. Have an episode zero. If you have a specific launch day in mind for your podcast, uh, you want to have an episode zero because Apple will not accept, well, most podcast uh, directories will not accept um, your podcast feed unless you have at least one episode published. So have an episode zero. It could be a trailer. Uh, I'll have a blog post on kind of what episode zero should be, but it should introduce you and the show. It should tell people when it's going to go live. Give yourself like a two-week window if you're going to say a specific date. Um, and, and then you can submit, and then you won't be at the mercy of when Apple approves. Uh, Apple generally will approve your podcast I've seen within like three or four days, but they could take as much as two weeks, especially if you submit it like right before Christmas. Um, all things basically stop between Christmas and New Year's. So have an episode zero and then you can know when your podcast gets submitted and then you can have your official launch day. Get on to Apple first. They are the biggest and most smaller podcast apps just pull from their directory. Like I said before, 60% of people listen to uh, podcasts using Apple's apps. 
uh, and I know I said that like in a bad way before and now I'm saying it in a good way, but uh, definitely get on Apple first. Uh, a good audio host should help you. Um, Castos, for example, has like a magic submit to Spotify button uh, that will do it automatically for you. If you're using your own website feed though, uh, you might be on your own and those uh, videos or those instructions that I link will be very helpful. Um, each host submission process is slightly different, but if you could figure out Apple's, I promise you'll be able to figure out everybody else's because Apple definitely has the most convoluted. Um, because you need like an Apple account and then, but you also need an iTunes account. Like I got, I want to make that clear. Uh, you can't just have like an iCloud account. You need this specific iTunes account. Uh, so those are some tips for submitting. Have an episode zero is the most important one. That can also serve as a way to practice your podcast and get comfortable with just you talking. All right. And finally, we'll talk about engaging your audience really quickly. Uh, when you engage, I know, I, I know it can sound like you're like yelling into the ether sometimes, like nobody's listening. So you want to have a clear call to action uh, where you're focusing on building the community. And this could be an email list. It could be a Facebook group or something else. I tried forums for a while. Nobody wants, it's like 2020. Nobody wants forums anymore. Um, but your website will help with that, right? Say, you know, go to how I built it slash 164 and sign up to get this free email opt-in thing uh, or join the community here at, at facebook.com. Um, ask questions on the show and encourage a response. You can even ask your listeners to record their own messages and send them uh, and, uh, to play on the show. So I think that's a really nice way to engage and there are tools like SpeakerPipe that will help you do that. Or if they're tweeting at you or emailing you, read their comments on the show, because again, that will make people feel more involved. Uh, if you're getting reviews, read the reviews on the air, because again, that'll encourage more people to do it. People love hearing the sound of their name. People just love hearing it. And so the more that you can involve them and say more of their names on air, the more people will engage. But having a clear call to action is the most important part there. Whew, all right, we covered a lot of ground. Let's wrap up real quick. Choose a topic and a name. Choose your why first, then choose a topic and a name. Uh, record a few episodes to see if you actually like it. Buy your domain and your hosting. Get audio hosting, I recommend Castos. Install WordPress, get your podcast plugin, I recommend Seriously Simple Podcasting. Then publish and submit it to the directories and you're off to the races. Have a good website set up where you have a clear call to action to build your email list or your Facebook group and you can start engaging right away. Okay, that is everything I have. My name is Joe Casabona. I'm a podcaster, consultant, and educator. You can find me on Twitter and most social networks at Jay Casabona. All of the links and the, the slides for this talk will be at shipyourpodcast.com slash resources. And finally, I do have a special offer for those of you who attended. Uh, I will give you a free 15-minute consulting call. If this helped, but you're still not sure, you're still not convinced that you should launch a podcast, I will talk you into it. Uh, just go to shipyourpodcast.com slash resources. There will be an email opt-in for a workbook that I give away. But at the bottom, there will be a, a Calendly link where you can grab 15 minutes of my time and we'll talk. And at the end of that talk, hopefully you'll be convinced to start your own podcast. All right. That's everything I got. Uh, thank you so much for attending. That's awesome, Joe. Thank you so much. And that's really generous, I think, um, the, the free consult, because you definitely put a case out for yourself of being the go-to guy for podcasting. That was a <laughs> super informative, really awesome webinar. I loved it. Uh, yeah, and I think um, just given the engagement we had here in the chat, both in Zoom and on Facebook over here, great advice. Um, and we have several questions, so let's jump into those. Um, Let's also, see. I will stop sharing my screen so that I can kind of engage more in the chat, but uh, we'll have a follow-up. I'm looking at you. We'll have okay. a follow-up <laughs> with like the, the link, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, we will follow. That's right. You guys will all be getting, if you register for this webinar, you'll be getting the follow-up email and I'll include those links that Joe just shared with us. Um, so first question, um, this is a quick one. Is the ATR2100 a cardioid mic? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. 
What a great question. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> that question was asked by somebody who's been doing some research because that is what's called a pickup pattern. Uh, a pickup pattern, if I, if the, let's see, if you are looking at my hands and they are the front of the microphone, a cardioid mic goes like this around the front of the microphone and kind of curves in. It looks like a heart so that the microphone will only pick up when talking in front of mic. A quick demonstration because the Shure SM7B is a cardioid mic as well as you can hear me really well here. But as I move towards the back, you can probably not hear me as well. And as I go uh -huh. here, you can't even hear me at all. Uh, that is very forgiving of the environment because if some sound happens behind the microphone, it's less likely to be picked up. Awesome. Great question. I saw that question come in and I was like, I don't know what it means, but I'll ask it. So <laughs> there we go. Um, what, uh, this is another technical one. What do you think of Lav Lavalier mics? Lavalier, Lavalier, Lavalier mics. Lavalier? Lavalier? Okay. <laughs> yeah. The lapel mics that kind of Okay. Right got it. Here. Yep. Uh, so I will use them for some of my videos because uh, you might have noticed, right? Sometimes this steals the focus away from my face. Um, but in general, I think that if you're going to be podcasting, you probably want something that is uh, going to be more sedentary. Uh, that's not like subject to like run up against you uh, because you're going to pick up sounds that you don't want. And uh, again, lavalier mics are designed to kind of pick up maybe far away from your voice, whereas these, cardio, uh, these cardioid mics or podcast mics generally expect you to talk about four fingers away. Uh, so they're not going to pick up as much sound. Okay, great. That's helpful. Um, is there any downside to exporting audio from Camtasia and using it for a podcast? No, as long as you get the right format, I think that that will be perfectly fine. Um, if you're used to Camtasia, then that's great. And then you might have the added benefit of having the video of you talking, which you can then put on your YouTube channel. Um, uh, you just want to make sure that you're getting a, a high enough quality and as long as it exports to mp3 you'll have that quality cool perfect um video versus audio so do you think it's important to include a video um part of, of a podcast uh, i think it's important to uh think about why you would want video um, i automatically publish my episodes to youtube because edison research uh, which is like a broadcast research um, outfit. They do a lot on podcasting and they essentially said, be where your audience is. And I automatically publish my episodes with like a cover image to YouTube. They don't do so well because there's not a lot of value in watching the video on YouTube when you can get it in your podcast app or even listen to it from the website on your phone. Um, if you're going to be demonstrating things uh, that you can succinctly also describe, then maybe it's a good idea. But it's a balance, right? Because if you're relying on video, uh, you're probably not describing things as well. Because I'm just saying, hey, look at my mug. I'm not saying, look at my green and orange mug with the hitchhiker yep. ghosts on it. Um, if you're relying on audio, then you're maybe over describing things or you don't have a lot to show and tell. So. Uh, the short answer is it depends. The longer answer is if you can easily put out the video, that's fine. But um, I don't think it adds a ton of value unless you're doing extra editing for it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, we had a few people that wanted to know your take on Anchor. Uh, great, great question. Um, I just did a webinar a couple weeks ago now um, about how teachers can put their lectures in podcast form. And I recommended Anchor. I recommend an anchor for them because it is free and uh, it's really easy to get started because you could just record directly through the app. Um, if you are going to be serious about podcasting and you're using it to advance your brand, I don't think that anchor is the best way to go for a few reasons. Uh, if it's free, then there's a reason it's free um, and it's probably you are the product or they, uh, you know, at this point they're owned by Spotify. So maybe it's a little bit better, but um, they offer like sponsorships and things like that, but they're going to be taking a cut of that. Uh, I also know for a time they inserted a little ad at the end. 
saying this podcast is hosted by anchor.fm um that's that's not i don't think that's a great look if you're trying to podcast professionally uh, and the other thing is that it's somebody else's playground, right? So Anchor makes it super easy. They'll submit to all of the directories for you. But because Apple requires an iTunes account, all of the podcasts are getting submitted in Anchor's name, not in your name. So uh, that's something to think about. If you're looking for affordable hosting to start, Podbean has a free tier where you get like five hours for free. And I think that's a great way to kind of ease your way into it. Uh, and then you can upgrade to a paid account if you're enjoying it. Awesome. I think, yeah, that's really helpful information. I hadn't, I wouldn't have even thought that it's not being submitted on your account. It's, so it's not like truly your podcast, right? Yeah. So I actually, yeah, had to, I like verified that separately because I wasn't sure either, but um, because iTunes requires that account, your name, you will still show up as the host, but uh, there's an area where all of your Apple podcasts exist. And the one that I have on Anchor isn't under that list. Mm hmm. Okay, well, we are out of time. There are still a few more questions. Um, I will post them in the Facebook group. Uh, Joe is in our Facebook group. So you guys, if you still have questions, check them out there. Um, you can, you can send them on the event page for this webinar and Joe can check them out and he'll get you guys some answers. He's also uh, given us a very generous 15 minute consult. So if you're ready to launch that podcast, and you just need some quick pointers or something like that. I recommend you take them up on that offer. Um, so once again, the Facebook group is Niche Agency Owners. Um, so hopefully I see you all there. And thank you everybody for coming. This is a lot of fun. Um, Kate, yes, I will be including the link to the, uh, to the consult in the follow-up email. So you guys will all get that today, tomorrow. I'll put it in the Facebook group as well. So you'll be able to find it, no problem. So thank you everybody for coming. Joe, thank you so much. That was awesome, so helpful. Um, so that's it, so we'll see you later. All right. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.